There is a new kid on the block, or should I say a new KDE kid on the block. This is Netrunner 4 Dryland, featuring, of course, the KDE desktop. So how does this stack up against other KDE distributions? And really, for that matter, how does it compare against Windows 7? Well, since I dual boot, I'm glad you asked that question. So why don't we find out? Now this is the default desktop here, just a few minor tweaks. I moved the panel bar, which is normally at the bottom, I just moved it at the top. And I added the RAM uh, widget or plasmoid here on the desktop just to let me know how much RAM this is using. This is really on par currently, just it's using, what is it, 589 megabytes of RAM. This is going to be more than your standard uh, GNOME environment. A little bit less than Windows 7, but for this uh, type of distribution, the RAM usage, I believe, is actually not that bad at all. Not that bad at all. Now, that being said, I recommend if you're going to run a KDE Linux OS, uh, you should have at least probably 2 gigabytes of RAM. All right, now this thing is loaded. Let me first start with the default wallpaper. This is unique. I really like this. This is really slick looking, uh, cool, colorful, uh, something I really haven't really seen before. Let me just say that I like it. It is extremely uh, pleasing on the eyes. A very unique desktop wallpaper. Nice job. All right, you have the shortcuts here on the top. Now, I will not go through every single one. Now, some of these you've seen before, like the time and calendar, you know, of course, the volume control the internet connections. I would like to highlight the uh, one to the far right. Okay, This allows you to move the panel bar to the top or bottom to adjust the height. And let me focus on the add widgets. Now this is something that's similar oh, to Windows 7 where you can add little extras to your desktop. As you can see here you have a multitude of choices. Everything from message, hardware temperature, media player, micro blogging, news notes, so on and on and on. Now this is pretty cool. Basically something like this. All you need to do is just uh, go to dictionary per se, drag it onto the desktop, and there you have your dictionary widget. And you can adjust the size and so on and so forth. For now I would just click X. Um, one of the more unique additions to the widgets is, oh, the bouncing ball. Don't know about this one. Now, I don't know about you guys, but as far as this goes, I can't wait to um, drop half a dozen of these on my desktop and maybe improve the quality of my next screencast. You can search here to the left and browse by categories. All right. Right-clicking on the panel bar. You can go to Task Manager Settings, Panel, Options such as Add Widgets, Panel, Lock, Remove the Panel, so on and so forth. To the far left you have some nice usable shortcuts, Facebook, YouTube, and Firefox. Uh, the codecs in here appear to be working. I went to the YouTube channel, had no problem playing any videos whatsoever. Of course the terminal shortcut here. and the home folder. And you can change how this looks. Again, similar to Windows 7. Let me just say that this is, as far as navigating, if you use Windows 7, this should not become a problem whatsoever. And of course, the one lone icon at the top, double-clicking that will get you to your My Computer, and specifically Conqueror with a K and it has all the CPU information here. And it looks like this is KDE 4.7.4, I believe 4.8 was released not too long ago. All right, one thing I do like when you click the start button, now this resembles more, the menu here, the submenu resembles more really, you know, Windows XP or more specifically Windows 2000. Again, this is easy to navigate to. You have your drop menus here as you see accordingly. 
Uh, one thing I do like, if you prefer to have a menu that looks more like Windows 7, I like the fact that you can uh, right click and let's see, switch to application launcher style. And probably if you're used to Windows 7, you will have the search bar here at the bottom. Oh, let's say you're new to this and you want to play music and you're not sure what to use. You can just type in music and it'll give you a couple options here. A phone on is the sound and video configuration. You would play music either through Amarok or Clementine. But again, if you are coming from Windows 7, you have the option of switching between this menu or right click, switch to the classic menu style if you prefer this. I don't have a problem with this. Once again, navigation is pretty easy. Now the one thing that is um, minor quibble, I realize that this is KDE, so having a lot of pieces of software start with K, like K, K Calculator, K Cal, Cal Clipper, K Mag, K Mouse, K Notes, you know, you know, every time I use a KDE distribution, I, f I feel like I should be eating a bowl of cereal. All right, like I said, this thing is loaded. This should be go, should be ready to go 100% out of the box, but not quite. I did find, find a piece of default software that just didn't quite make sense to me. If I may point your eyes to the sound menu, submenu here. Now this is okay, master, up and down, similar to what you would see in Windows 7. If you click that, it'll unmute. That's fine. Let's go to the K mixer. Now I did, I was playing around with this, tweaking with this. Now one thing here that to me just didn't make sense. You have your various functions here. Of course, master, PCM, CD, volume, and mic. And mic select. This is fine. But do you see what's missing here? I have a volume control, but there's no volume meter. Now, isn't there a volume meter in Windows 7 for the volume control? Well, of course there is. So why wouldn't there be something in KDE, or at least in this distribution of KDE? Now, this is installed, as they say, right out of the, right out of the box. Now, to be fair, I haven't installed any updates. Now, perhaps installing the updates may correct this somewhat glaring flaw but as it is just freshly installed to have a volume mic control without the meter to me as a Windows dual booter makes no sense this is right now if I wanted to do a screencast inside Netrunner this is pretty much useless because I would have to guess at the volume control but that being said maybe this is appropriate because none of the screencasting software works Anyway, I tried um, record it now, Kazam, record my desktop. All th uh, record my desktop. All three were pretty much useless. Other than that, Netrunner for Dryland looks and feels terrific. So let's take a look at a final score for this software. Yep lot to choose from. This thing is loaded, ready to go, out of the box. Stability. Haven't noticed any. Zero. Bugs. Well, if you would like to call that uh, one volume mixer thing a bug, and it's really a big one, it really shouldn't be there. You know, something as pragmatic as that, there should be a volume meter ready to go. Uh, let's see. Navigation. I Windows dual boot. This looks just fine. User friendliness. Again, going back to that uh, thing with the volume mix, that could have been a little bit more friendly, a little bit more usable. Other than that, this looks and feels terrific. So, really, out of a total score of a hundred, um, you know, twenty points per, you know, feature. Uh, I probably would have to give this an 80 because that thing with the volume mixer just kind of really irritated me. I mean, this is a fairly large download over a gig. Now, I know I can get it working, tweaking. That's not a problem for me. But if you are brand new to Linux coming from Windows, that function feature should already be there without having to do 
any updates. That's my quibble with this. Other than that, I would recommend trying this if you have absolutely no intention of doing any kind of recording or screencasts and you like Windows 7, you're probably going to love this. That's it. That is my take on Netrunner 4 Dryland. Now this is the 64-bit edition. Thank you for watching. I hope this was somewhat helpful. And as always, I will catch you sometime in the future.